Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Mr. Sibitz! Mr. Sibitz! Yes, Captain. We're wasting our fire at this range. Pass the word. Men are to flank the canyon, dig in, and hold their positions. And their fire, sir? Cease fire. But they'll think we've quit, sir. I hope they do, Mr. Sibitz. Yes, sir. Captain? What about your leg? It's fine. Now pass the word, Mr. Sibitz. Right away, sir. Cease fire! Gorse! Sergeant Gorse! Yo! I'm right here, Captain. Give me a hand. Behind that boulder. Yes, sir. Can you bear weight on that lake? I can get behind that boulder. <clears throat> Are you easy now, sir? Don't know when I've been more comfortable. Uh, if you're dry, I got part of a canteen here. No, no, save it. You'll need it. Captain, there's a clearing about a hundred yards back. We got the horses back there. Harrison and me together to get you there. I'm fine here, Sergeant. Well, you'd rest a mite easier there, sir. Maybe you ought to take up nursing, Gorse. You're developing a fine manner for it. Well, sir, I... I reckon it's all this easy living. It's kind of got me soft. Go back to your position, Sergeant, and dig in. Flanking the canyon this way, you must be figuring them engines will try another run through. No use, 40 men spreading thin against two or 300 Arapaho. Yes, sir. Go on back, Gorse. Send Lieutenant Seibert's here. Right, sir. Lieutenant? Lieutenant Seibert. <sighs> You set for me, sir? Men have their orders. All down the line. How about ammunition? We've enough, sir. What's enough? Well, sir, I enough think... Enough to lead a charge down the canyon and run them off? No, I don't believe so. Enough to hold our ground here and stand off an assault? Well, that would depend on the size of the assault. Mr. Now, I... Seibert's, there are at least 200 Arapaho fire in what's left of our camp down there. I want to know if we can hold these positions. Not long, sir. Not if they turn on us full force. Then we don't have enough ammunition, do we, Mr. Seibert's? No, sir, I guess not. Uh, what do we do, Captain? Sit here. Hope they think they wiped us out in their last run-through. That why you ordered the men to hold their fire? That's why. They're riding off, Captain. Uh, don't look like they counted us too important, Captain Quince. That uh, complaint, Sergeant? No, sir. I was born plain insignificant. I mean to stay that way. Help me get the captain back to the clearing, Sergeant. His leg needs a. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Seibitz. We can't waste any more daylight. You have six hours of good riding left before nightfall. Well, sir, you can't ride hard. You've lost a lot of blood. The patrol's going back to the fort under your command, Mr. Seibitz. Harrison and I'll take it in easy stages. We can't leave you here, Mr. sir. Mr. Seibitz, you'll reach Fort Laramie tomorrow night, if you're lucky. Major Daggett needs a full report as soon as possible. Captain Quince, sir, we could strap you in your saddle. No need for that, Sergeant. I'd slow you up, and Major Daggett needs that report. Now, send Harrison to me. Prepare to move out. I know this country better than Harrison, Captain. Mr. Seibertz will need you, Gorse. This will be good experience for my orderly. Yes, Captain. Patrol... Report to the clearing. Check your map. Well, prepare to move Good luck, Mr. Seibitz. Thank you, Captain. Report to the clearing now. Check good luck to you, sir. Mm. 
You're all played out, aren't you, sir? There's fresh water ahead to the left there. That clump of trees. You can't go on just water, Captain. Well, it'll help. We can water the horses, too. Not much sunlight left. I hoped we'd find a settler where we could bed down for the night. This is Arapaho country, Harrison. They routed out most of the settlers. They sure got a way acting like they own the place, don't they? Running off white men. They were here first. I guess they got a funny idea that makes it their land. If we'd have had the whole company back there, we'd have run through them, sure. Showed them whose land it is. Well, it would take an awful good company. Those were dog soldiers leading that raid. Dog soldiers? Toughest fighters in the tribes. Handpicked for the daring. Hote Mintanio. Uh, how's that, sir? That's the Cheyenne name for dog soldiers. But most Plains Indians have a select band like them. Sioux and the Arapaho. Oh, Guess we were smart to take cover in that canyon, Captain. Yeah, I guess we were. In through the trees, Harrison. Good grass there by that stream. I'll be right there to lend a hand, sir. Stand to steady me as I come over on this leg, Harrison. It won't bear weight. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, look, I got I guess I guess I'm weaker than I thought. Now don't you worry, Captain. I got bull strength. Here, let me help you. Now, you just sit back against this tree. There. How's that, sir? All right, Harrison. Thanks. I'll get you some fresh water. You gone all the way. No, I'm, I'm all right. I'll ease those cinches and lead the mounts down to the stream and water them. Go on. I just need to catch my breath. Rest a bit. I sure wish I could make you right comfortable, sir. In bed with food and all. I know. Mind the horses. Yes, sir. Harrison. Harrison! You awake, sir? Yeah. I shouldn't have gone to sleep. You just didn't have no choice, Captain. Once you drank that cool water, you was plumb through. What's that? Horses? No, they're not making a sound, sir. I, I hobbled them before I Shh. set up. Wait a minute. There's horses, all right. Sounds like they're riding this way. I sure don't hear a thing. Could be you got some fever, Captain Quince. Some folks hear things when they got fever. You keep listening, you'll hear them. Yes, sir. Uh, well, what I was going to say was, while you was resting so easy like, I set out and took a look around. There, there's a cabin, sir, not, not more than a couple of hundred yards away. They're coming from the north. Yeah, yeah, I can hear them now. Couldn't be cavalry, Captain. They move south long ahead of us. Not cavalry. Look, look through the trees. Engines. Dog soldiers. Uh, Captain, we better make for that cabin. No, no, no. We're better off here. The trees will hide us. Unless they already know we're here. Lie flat, Harris. If they start through the trees, fire. Can you handle that carbine, sir? Yeah, I can. They're making for us, sir. Sure we're seeing. Now wait them out. They're right at the tree, Captain. Easy, easy. I'm, I'm sure not keen on them seeing me first. Shut up, Harris. They're riding right along the tree line. Going on south. I can't make them out anymore. You see them? Now they've gone on past the thicket. I can't see them. Man. That was closer. Still close. They stopped. You want I should get our horses, sir? I do not. Can you hear them? 
And they ain't moving as I can tell. I counted six, Captain. Six. That cabin, where is it? Near as I can tell. That's where they are, sir. It's that direction, not more than a couple hundred yards away. <sighs> oh, I tell you, sir, that's a welcome sound. You were talking about a deserted cabin, Harrison? Not a living thing around. Likely been that way for years. Uh, you'll have to near carry me. I, I can't mount again. Just you don't worry yourself, Captain. I'll take right good care of you. <laughs> Not ten more steps. <laughs> You can make it, sir. Uh, I don't know, Harrison. You just lean heavy now. We'll get there. You make out fine. Here, come no closer. Well, Ma'am, th there's no cause for shooting. We're your kind, white folks. I'll judge about the shooting. What ails him? He's all shot up and weak. Ma'am, I'm not even asking for a hand, but, but I gotta put him down inside. Uh, me. Second Cavalry, Fort Laramie. Harrison, I think I... Captain Quince. Captain, you all right, sir? Is he dead? No, ma'am, not yet. Would you just try to help? Put that shotgun down and, and help a body? How are you on food? Oh, tin of jerky, maybe. Blankets? Shot? You got anything? I got an awful sick captain here, ma'am. That's what I got. And I'm lifting him up right now and taking him in there. How much money you got? I don't know. A little. Hand it over. Once we're inside... I tell you, son, I'd as soon shoot the both of you as jaw this way. I want your money and your guns. I don't rightly know how you stand yourself. His money, too. I'm bringing him inside now. Not for long. For this little bit of money. Open this door for me. You're another weakling, are you? My arm's full of logs. Put them by the stove and quit your whimpering. Soft bellies, a lot of you. <clears throat> How is he? Ask him. He's only pretending to sleep. Captain? You can't fool her, Harrison. Don't try. Oh, you gave me a fright, sir. I wasn't sure you was going to come around. I'll be all right. She get the bullet? Yeah. Yeah, she got it. I see new cubs are tougher hide. Captain, she took everything we had. Jerky, guns, money. What kind of white woman is she? Best quiet him. I buried four husbands, 20 children. A couple of strangers don't faze me. Better get some sleep, Harrison. She says you watched me all night. You sure you all right? I'm fine. Now go to sleep. That's an order. Yes, sir. Four husbands, ma'am. Outlived them. But they was men. Regular men. Didn't go around surring every other man. And ma'am and women folk. Yeah, they weren't in the army. Eh, indeed they wasn't. No call for the army in those days. Mr. Pelfrey and me lived as peaceable as could be with the Indian folk. We come here peaceable, me and Mr. Pelfrey. When was that? In the thirties. Things are different, then. No different than with Mr. Griffith, Mr. Albright. Even later on with Mr. Netherton. Yeah, there was lessons to learn in the West in them days. Eat the porridge. Much obliged, ma'am. Hattie. Oh, how's I? Hattie, Hattie, I say. Hattie Pelfrey, I go by that. I can't abide being called ma'am. Oh. I lean toward Hattie. Yeah. <sighs> 
Hattie, you live alone, middle of Arapaho country. How do you manage? I come by your guns. Such little money you had. Sometimes it's food, sometimes robes. I'll take what I can get. No matter to me if it's settlers or scouts or army folks. Or Arapaho? Folks don't find Hattie less than they lost. Or half dead. It'd open your eyes to see what they part with. You always greet him with a shotgun. If need be. Before we came here last evening, a band of Arapaho braves stopped here. I got good arrows, strong bows, rifles. <laughs> Even a couple of buffalo guns off a hunter broke his leg down the canyon. They got a camp near here, the Arapaho? You got something more to give me? Oh, Harrison says you cleaned us out. You're getting full measure. What's going on? My ring. Hey, you can't have that. But I got it. I ain't had a pretty for a spell, and that's a fact. A man ain't safe sleeping here. I bought that ring myself in St. Louis. Oh, it'll fit fine once I wrap some twine around it. Body's fingers thin with age. Next you'll be picking my bones, you old buzzard. Mind your tongue! Give him his ring back, Hattie. Not likely. Captain Quince, what says you can't hit an old woman when she's so contrary? Oh, for one thing, she's got a shotgun. I'd soon use it as jaw with you. You take his ring, you give us something, Hattie. I do admire a pretty. You clean forgot the bright feeling they give you. Our guns for the ring, Hattie, that's fair. I come by your horses down the creek this morning. They're grazing on my grass, swilling my water. The pretty's to pay for that. Captain, I better see to them mounts. You'll stay with the sick and ailing. I'll see to the horses. You saying he can't leave the cabin? Not alive, he can't. Why, you... Uh, ain't... She means it, Harrison. I do that. Now, I've got tending to do. Outside. No need peering around for your rifles whilst I'm gone. You won't find them. Captain Quince... We gotta move out of here. Well, we need horses to do it. Here. You steady me. You ain't fit to stand yet, sir. Just you stand still. <clears throat> yeah. We'd have to crawl once we're outside anyway. I can manage to the door. <laughs> like as not, she's just crouched out there waiting for us. It's, it's, it's worth a chance. We may not get another. Yes, sir. Get the door. <clears throat> Get on your belly. Move, move small through this brush toward the stream. Can you, can you see her? No, sir. The stream, how far is it? A good 50 yards. Maybe more. I, I, I don't see the horses. Not yet, sir. Flatten, Harrison. It's a rapper hole. She come out of those trees by the water, sir. She's talking to them engines. Don't, don't, don't even breathe. She's going back toward the trees. Yeah, but they ain't a sign of our horses, sir. No sense trying to go it without them. We'll have to go back. To the cabin? <sighs> Without guns or horses, we're no good out here, Harrison. Come on. What you reckon? She's done with them, Captain. That woman? She might have eaten them. I'll steady you for the walk, sir. Oh. 
I give a lot for some of her strength right now. You think I could find him alone? Get yourself killed doing it? Uh, it's no good, Harrison. We'll have to wait. You're just about as foolish as can be, ain't you? Crawling around in the brush out there. What's I do? Fresh air, Hattie. You got no guns, no food. There's a Arapaho all around. You don't think too good of your hides, do you? Where are the horses, Hattie? Your color's coming back some. You heard the captain. What about the horses? They come right high in these parts, youngin. Yeah, I could get me a passler things. Trading horses. You're real friendly with the Arapaho, Hattie. They treat me good. Of course, they know Mr. Pelfrey and me come peaceable to their country. Not to run them off what rightly is their land. You never seen them at the killing? White women, babies, no matter to them. You ever ask yourself who started it all? I seen it happen. The whites and their guns moving in. It wasn't pretty work they did. Women, children, too. They, they let you live here. <laughs> There's got to be a reason. He come here like you, full of shot, ailing. White men's doing. Mr. Pelfrey and me, we took him in, tended him. He was a young chief then. But standing bare, never forgot. Not in all these years. He's as near to a relation I got. You're from another age, Hattie. You and standing bare. You got anyone? A wife? No, no wife. Mother, then? I got her memory. A pair of her earrings, that's all. Not on you. I'd have found them. They're back at Fort Laramie. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, that's a pity. <laughs> you can get the guns without waking her? I can't make out good with no light. But I can fight an old woman in the dark. Not long till sunup. This may be our last chance. Easy now. <clears throat> now that's just close enough. Stealing up on an old woman. What kind of men are you? I don't mind shooting a bit. You're a witch. That's what you are. Seeing in the dark, hearing. You're no kind of woman at all. Maybe not now, young'un. But I was once. More woman than you could imagine. Now shut up, both of you. Someone's coming. I come earlier than I said. It's probably them same engines again, Captain. Yeah. Now get back where you belong. Over there, to your beds. Captain, I had my gun. I'd blow us all up before I'd let them take us. I know. Maybe I'd help you. She's out there right now, trading for us. You know that. Get ready. Someone's coming. That side of beef will last me the winter and more. Gift for my friend, standing bare. For us, Hattie? Now then, you're worth a sight more than that. They're riding off, Captain. You sparing us, Hattie? For what? Sparing you? You didn't tell them about us. They didn't ask. You acting human so sudden-like. After near scaring us to death. I ain't gonna miss this young that's a fact. I'd soon keep company with a ball and calf. I tell you, I'm bone brittle with you two around. Well, we'd be glad to get out of your way, trade for guns, our horses, and a cut of your new beef. Been thinking about them ear bobs. I've been thinking about our guns. Under my bed. These two horses sat at the spring. Now, uh, them ear bobs. They're back at Fort Laramie, Hattie. 
You mean to ride back with us? I gotta watch who I'm seen with. Yeah. Well, well I might get back your way someday. If I do, I'll, I'll bring him to you. <laughs> For these old ears. Now, here, youngin. Pretties ain't for me, not no more. I'll take my ring, ma'am, and thank you. But I ain't even pretending to understand you. If you was regular men, you'd find yourself a woman. Pretties don't belong on a man's hand, locked up at no fort. Now, us women folk, it, it gives us that, that bright feeling, having a pretty... Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Sam Edwards, and John Daner. Company, tension! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Anyone who has ever been helped by the Red Cross can tell you how important help is when the need arises. And everyone who is a member of the American Red Cross can tell you how much deep satisfaction comes with knowing you have helped provide aid in an emergency. Make your investment in humanitarianism soon. CBS Radio urges you to join and serve your local Red Cross chapter. Your membership and your contributions make all Americans neighbors in a time of need. <laughs>